Hey, 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 y'all, how y'all doing? Look, my glasses match my shirt. That was not done on purpose, child. So how y'all doing? It's time for another chit chat video. It's been a while, I've been busy. Who hasn't been busy? But I have a lot to talk about. So this chit chat video is gonna probably be a little long. I know I'm gonna break things up because it's um, the afternoon. I'm making dinner for JB and myself. So I have to, some things to show you. I have some things to talk about. So we are just gonna jump right into it. In this chit chat video, I'm going to be doing a hair related video. I'm filming dual. Okay, it's dual. Dual means two. <laughs> oh, and I, blame it on the short name. So I'm going to be recording a video, um, a hair related video on how I go from this to a banging twist out. I know my hair. I know what I need to do to get it to the place to where the twist out is going to be fabulous. So that's like another hair related video coming up. Okay, y'all? What I've been doing, um, why do I have this twist and curl here? So, child, I've been spending a lot of money. Hear me out. I've actually been buying stuff that, that we need and that I need. Now, yeah, there are a couple of hair-related things I've gotten, but it could be worse. Let me just say this. So, those of you who don't know, this is the life update about my spending, <laughs> spending habits. It could be worse, but um, I've been buying some stuff that I need um i not necessarily that i want but that i need and i'm just just been gauging so as far as hair related products um i had a, a subscriber that mentioned in my last comparison video i th believe it was my deep conditioner comparison video which by the way i'm going to be doing another deep conditioner comparison with the queen helen and the tea tree oil comparing them. i think that tea tree is by african pride don't quote me on that though. So anyway, y'all, we have here, she she mentioned that the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Deep Conditioner is like bae to her. It's fabulous. And I'm like, when the heck did Palmer start making full, legit deep conditioners? Now, I know they have that package and I've used that package before. Um, it's like a dollar and some change, but they have full-fledged Deep conditioner. And so I hopped right on it. I literally bought it within 24 hours of her telling me, y'all, you ain't got to tell me. I'm a reformed product gent. You ain't got to tell me shit. So I purchased not only the Palmer's Cocoa Butter, but I also purchased the Coconut Oil. So I'm going to be doing an official review on this one. I don't think I'm going to really do a review on this one. I will probably use this more in JB's hair, to be honest. But this is the one I would definitely be reviewing, okay? Um, and, and I already kind of opened it. It, is smell, it smells like lotion. I mean, it is what it is. But I'm excited. It's heavy. It got some weight to it. So be looking out for this one after I do that comparison with the Queen Helen um, conditioners, okay? Um, so cholesterol. It's the... It's the comparison of cholesterols but anyway another thing i purchased i was at the dollar general minding my business and i saw that they had some products that were relatively cheap okay affordable so i love the shampoo we have the um cream of nature organ oil from morocco i like this complete line honestly by cream of nature this is really really worth it i like it i like it now in the past certain cream of nature shampoos have made my scalp itch, but this one is okay. Then I saw another product by the African Pride line, Moisture Miracle Honey Chocolate and Coconut Oil Repair and Replenish Conditioner. I was like, let me, first of all, I love the color. So I will be also reviewing this. Look, I, <laughs> I have some contacts recently. I got some contacts recently. So I'm gonna be doing more wash day videos besides the fact that I really don't like um, my TV swapping around. Okay, Vivian, I don't like shower videos. They are a pain to record. They really are. And because I don't have a proper camera, I'm using my phone. I'm going to have to really toy around with the footage to ensure that it's zooming in at the right areas. But whatever. It is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and review this product in the shower. Yes, I can review it outside of the shower. It's possible. But you need water and moisture for a product that is intended for washing out. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing this, this product. So be on the lookout again for this product and this product. Let's do go ahead and do that um, screenshot, child. 
So working out. <laughs> so working out. I've officially started working out again. Today, I think I did about 15 minutes of lower body workout. I was, wasn't feeling all that great, so I, I didn't do any cardio. But something is better than anything. Tomorrow, hopefully, I'm feeling a little bit better. Uh, I have a little bit more energy, I should say. And then I could do some cardio. I'm maintaining the 160s, y'all. But my goal overall has always been 140. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just incorporating any type of workout, anything, every day. A body in motion, okay? That's what they say, body in motion. So besides that, um, like I showed y'all some new products I've been, I've been getting. Yeah, let me tell y'all about this family event I went to. Did I talk about it? I don't know, child. So if I did, I'll take it out this this video. I edited it out. So I went to um, a family event on my mother's side of the family. It's, they always have a fish fry. They, first of all, they always eat fried fish. Let's just put that out of the way. And so they have a... I got to get the cookies out. They have a yearly event out in North texas they fish and we eat the fish that we you know that we catch i don't catch it meaning they they eat the fish they catch. and so this particular i decided to go down because i asked my mom she said everyone's coming down i said who's everyone because let me like let me tell you something my mom was the youngest of 15 kids my grandmother was his second wife, and then he got married again. So he's been married for three. He's been married three times. So everyone could be okay. Everybody, meaning the the stepchildren too, which we don't even say that. The other kids, Miss Susie Lee, that was my stepmom. Was my step grandmother was named Miss Susie Lee, and so I'm like, who's everyone? So she told me who was always coming. I said, bet I'm gonna be there because there's some people I haven't seen in forever. And so, girl, let me tell you something. First of all. I love my family. I do. There's some of them that I, I, I don't tolerate as much. And so I stopped by the um, dispensary um, and I picked up some edibles and the Pakistani man was like, where, do, where are you going? I said, I'm going to a family event. I'm going to be handing this out to people who, who could be a problem. Child, he started smiling. He gave me a free... Um, <laughs> He gave me some free stuff. He liked that. I was like, okay, thank you, Kumar. So I headed out there, child, and I had a baggie ready for the problematic family members so we could all get along and have fun, have a good ass time, right? My daddy was on the top of that list. Ernest, my cousin Ernest, was on that list too. Ernest wasn't there, so his brother got his edibles. I was not playing around. I, I, I handed him out, and look, my mama and her um her sisters were looking at me judging. I was like, hey, y'all. And let me just say this. I handed it out to all the people who I know have either smoke weed, and, and this is legal here, meaning it was... um. What do you call it? Delta 8 and Delta 10. It's all legal. And I only, I only handed it out to people who I know. One, I know you smoke weed. Even though it's illegal here in Texas. This is Texas. This is South. I know you smoke weed. One, I know you do something. So go ahead and pop this edible and shut the hell up. <laughs> so what else is going on, you guys? Um, That's it for the family. Like I showed you all the products I got and all that. So child, let's get into Beyonce and her hair products. So, Beyonce broke the internet. Let me just say this first off. And I'm, I'm going to try to be as non-critical, judgmental as possible. I'm not a fan of Beyonce. I'm, I stopped being a fan of Beyonce ever since. Um, we can say no, 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 no. We can say yeah, yeah. The remix version. This is the remix. Like... I think beyond because I think people blow her up. The beehive is out of control. I think that people blow her up. She's a great entertainer. There's no doubt about that. She's a great entertainer. Beyonce broke the internet again because she was showing people her real her real hair under all those wigs. Now, I'm not surprised by that. A lot of these entertainers have real hair just because they don't show it. 
so let me give you some examples some people i know that have or even at one point had really beautiful hair sanaya lathan sanaya lathan of course oprah oprah always will wear wear her hair um especially recently but she was she was wigging it up for a while too though um cardi b Nicki minaj there are tons of black women that have beautiful hair um even if they're not cele celebrities in, in the limelight you know what i mean now her hair is long and i do feel like you know yes she has healthy hair but i will say this you can clock me on it i don't really care i think her hair would be healthier if she wouldn't wear the wigs as much and if her hair wasn't that blonde 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 honey blonde color it's beautiful she has healthy hair because she she can afford to have healthy hair let's just say what it is she can afford to do it she has a stylist i think her mama was a, was a beautician so yeah she knows how to take care of her hair but she can afford for people to take care of her hair for her um do not fall for the bullshit. don't fall for it I, everybody has jumped on the natural hair bandwagon because again, it is so lucrative. I mean, black women, black people in, in general, we are the number one consumer here in America. We spend more money than some countries. Like I kid you not, look up the stats. And especially when it comes to products, hair products, beauty products, black women have been in the number one for almost 20 damn years. And it is what it is. And, and these companies know that. That's why when you have a company um, that after a while, they they sell to the other, they sell. And, and it's a, I know a lot of people feel a certain type of way when companies sell their, their um, line, but that is honestly a business um yeah i've been drinking sorry that's a business move because it gets to a point to where everyone sells regardless of race they do um it is what it is but anyway beyonce probably gonna sell too <laughs> so yeah y'all not impressed not doing it so but i'm pretty sure she had plenty of people in the beehive that's gonna keep her and her product's going all about the lens. It's not about the product. Like I said in my community page when I posted the um, screenshot of the video, it's not about the products. It's about your regimen. It's really about what you're doing throughout the week, throughout the month. How are you washing your hair um, than what you're necessarily using? Yes, there are some products that are going to help with length retention and all that. But if you're doing anything in your hair regimen that is counterproductive, like dyeing your hair a lot or not cutting your ends like me <laughs> um that's gonna be detrimental to your regimen okay so yeah it's what you do not what you use moving on uh y'all lately there's been a lot of doom and gloom i know someone i know so many people that are losing loved ones child it's just the second quarter and i my heart just breaks for these people I know someone whose husband passed suddenly. He had been ill. That was sudden too. And he passed recently, like within within the last two weeks. And it was like a week before their anniversary. I, I, I often find that, um, you know, when some of these people, not all, they typically pass around important dates either a birthday or a holiday you know and so that that's just but i really do feel my for my friend so not necessarily friend i'm sorry she's an, she's an acquaintance okay let's just say that so i reached out to her daughter and i let her know you know i'm praying for you guys you know you're my thousand first because they're he's he was young i think anyone who dies suddenly under the age of 70 to me that's young that is young in my opinion but yeah my heart goes out to them um and anyone who's suffering through anything. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right, y'all. Let me go ahead and... I should never have done that. Hold on, y'all. Woo. Y'all, this eclipse, like I stated, was a... You know, I vlogged a little bit that day. It was such a beautiful thing. But... There was 
some crazy stuff that happened and y'all know by now that as humans as beings we are in tune with mother nature okay um the earth is also like the waves are in tune with a full moon even some women their menstrual cycles with the full moon um i know that <laughs> The ER is crazy. My husband will always say it's a full moon. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy in the hospital today, you know, because he always will work at a trauma hospital. So things get crazy during a full moon. Eclipse even even worse apparently. So there was a influencer on TikTok. I don't know if y'all have heard about this. Her name was Danielle Johnson, and she was a astrologist um she would also you know she was real big into the numbers what some of us in the christian community would consider the dark the dark arts right um i'm gonna say this too though as someone who's a follower of jesus christ i do think that there are some people out there who can dabble in that I'm not going to even use the words dabble. They are fully immersed in that, but they have a different type of mindset and they are protected and they're in it. But this young woman, in my opinion, I'm going to get to her story. She was not protected. Not only that, <clears throat> excuse me, she possibly had some mental issues prior to getting into it. It's almost like people who are like, who was that? Left Eye. Remember that that documentary, you guys, The Last, the last Days of Left Eye? She was looking into all the numbers and the astrology, and she was really intrigued by it. But I think she was going into it. Her mind wasn't all the way there. We, we know this. In my opinion, it wasn't. One and two, she wasn't protected by whatever type of, you know, darkness. Is. She was not protected at all to be dabbling in that. This young woman, again, named Danielle Johnson, she had over 100,000 followers. She was really into it and up until a few days before the eclipse, she was saying how basically she was predicting a end of the world. This is it. And again, no one knows. No one knows the day and time, the hour. We do not know. So it's anybody who's saying this stuff. And there's has been some Christians out there too. There's one of them. I'm going to go ahead and clock, clock her name because she's here on YouTube. Her name is Mina Gibson. She was proclaiming before COVID um, when Obama was, was president, how Obama was going to, excuse me, when Trump was president, how I'm not even going to get into it, but she's on these YouTube streets and she's a false prophet. That kind of bothers me that people still follow them, but it is what it is. So this young woman was basically saying that the world was going to end for the, the eclipse. And you guys, the eclipse has a lot of, um, especially for indigenous people. Like I have a friend, oh, I know someone, she's not a friend, who is Navajo and they take this stuff very serious. They, you know what I mean? It's like they don't even go out when there's an eclipse um, because it's, it's actually beautiful, their beliefs. They view the eclipse and sun as an intimate moment for the eclipse and sun. So they take that time to fast and pray, meditate. They don't go outside like we do and look around because they're like, uh-uh, that's, that's a moment between the sun and the moon. And as humans, we need to be respectful of that moment. So to me, that's a beautiful thing. But moving on, this particular woman was predicting that the world's going to end. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Be ready. It's, you know, get ready. She's out in L.A. So what does she do? She gets into it with her boyfriend, stabs him to death. She tries to drag his body out of the apartment when she couldn't do that, she then takes her two kids, a nine-year-old and an 11-month-old baby, get in her SUV, hops on the freeway, going like 90 miles per hour, going crazy, opens up the door, pushes her babies out the door. This is so horrible. The nine-year-old was holding the 11-month-old baby. When the nine-year-old hit the interstate, of course, the baby fly, flies out of her hands, y'all. This is so sad. 
and the baby was struck by a car and unfortunately died due to her injuries. The nine-year-old, of course, she was injured, but she survived. The mother then, driving erratically in LA, plunges her car head on into a tree and dies. And I'm just like, are you 100,000 followers? 100,000 people following this person that is clearly not all the way there. So my thing is, is that like, what is it going to take for people to realize that these influencers, and I, I say that as someone who's on this type of platform, y'all have to be careful that people want people who overshare, people who claim to know stuff that is other otherworldly. Come on. Like, no, absolutely not. It's too, it's too many. Y'all have to excuse this. <laughs> My heart just aches for that baby. It really does. So y'all, that happened. Um, moving on, moving on. I am watching some YouTube stuff. Child, I watch yet again. And this is going to go into what I'm watching. I watched Death Becomes Her. Let me tell you something. <laughs> The entire movie, I will watch, I could watch that movie like at least once a month. That movie is hilarious to me. My favorite scene is when Goldie Hawn is walking around and she, she had on that fat suit. She getting icing and eating the icing out. And she's, <laughs> I guess uh, Meryl Streep character, she is on this, ooh, y'all. I guess Meryl Streep character, she's playing on this, um, what do you call it? like a soap opera and she's being strangled and Goldie Hawn is being ejected out of her apartment and she keeps replaying the scene back and forth as, as they're dragging her, her uh, fluffy ass out the apartment. <laughs> she's playing the scene over and I think it's absolutely hilarious. I love, love, love. And I absolutely love the ending where they're laughing in his funeral. So inappropriate. Did y'all know? I didn't know for the longest the um the woman that plays like the mysterious beautiful woman with I mean her body was banging in the movie. Um that's Ingrid Bergman's daughter. She looks just like her. I had no idea that was her daughter. No idea. Y'all excuse the noise again. Alright, y'all. So what I'm watching on YouTube. Netflix, no, what I'm watching on Netflix, Hulu, whatever else I can find. Um, so I've actually been watching quite a bit of TV and movies and stuff for a change. Um, just recently, I finally finished Killing Eve. Y'all, Killing Eve, my favorite psychopath, Vanilla, 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 y'all yeah, been drinking. Um, her, first of all, whoever is styling this show, this her style was impeccable throughout the entire series. I finished it. I really was not feeling season 12. I'm mean, sorry. I really, I say that because it's about finding the 12, which is part of the series. I wasn't really feeling season five, which is the last season. I wasn't. I thought there would be more stuff that would come about, like some truth. It just felt like it was all over the place, the season finale for me personally. And so I knew that someone would have to die and someone did die. I'm not going to give any spoilers. And so that wasn't surprising. It was sad, but not surprising. I just felt like it could have been better. Honestly, it could have been better. So not a big fan of it, but it is what it is. Um, started to watch a new series called Reindeer. Is it called Reindeer AM? Or y'all, excuse me. It's on Netflix about a stalker. First of all, it's based out of I don't know if it's British. Their accents are more Scottish Ireland. So this bartender has a stalker, and she is giving me any vibes. From Stephen King's, what is that, y'all? The Stephen King movie, Annie. With, with <laughs> she was obsessed with the author. That's what she's giving me. And so she becomes obsessed with this bartender. She claims to be a popular, wealthy lawyer girl. She's lying. 
lying, lying. But he entertains her and that's a problem. And I think the reason why he entertains her is because she entertains him. So it's a toxic relationship between both of them. But I'm on like episode four, I believe. And it got dark. Like it turned to a place to where I was not expecting it to go. Um, and so I had to stop. For like, and I I haven't picked it up yet. It's been like two days, cause it, it got it went a little dark. And when I mean dark, it turned into there are scenes of rape, and so it's really hard for me, and I think for anybody to look look at stuff like that. It's disturbing. So I'm like, hmm. So I'm not sure if I can look into that right now. Um, as far as movies go, oh, another thing I've been trying to get into is Fargo season three. I started it. It's very confusing. One, the accents are they are very Fargo, Minnesota. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I think I'll have to go back and rewatch it. I'm just on episode three, so it's early enough. I think these are a little too big, y'all. It's early enough for me to rewatch it. So I think I will start it over because it's a little, I'm confused on what the hell's going on. Before I go, watched a movie, M. Night Shyamalan. Y'all, M. Night Shyamalan, <sighs> he could be a hit or a miss. I think he wants, I, I think sometimes that he tries too hard. So I watch Glass which is like a hodgepodge of Split and Unbreakable. It has three characters. And so it's so good to see Bruce Willis, y'all. I feel so horrible for his family. Those of you who don't know, if you've been living under a rock, Bruce Willis has frontal lobe dementia. Same thing that um, Wendy Williams have. And they are way too young to have this, by the way. So, Glass was a lot better than I thought it would be. It really was. Um, on my to-do list... Oh, oh, another one that I've started to watch is Vikings. A little confused, but my sister claims, you know, we need to watch it since we're, you know, 15% Scandinavian. We need to get... We need to get into it because that's our that's our heritage. So, one movie that I want to watch with his five foot is The Creator with John David Washington. I love me a good sci-fi. I really do. So, I want to watch this. Uh, and I am. I'm going to watch it. And so, um, for sure. So, yeah, I want to talk about, this is going to be way off beat, about in general... People who overshare on social media, and I've, I've mentioned this before. I know this goes way off my usual chit chat, but I just want to have this discussion with y'all because I'm y'all not doing nothing, so we could talk about this, right? People who overshare and they do this facade of um, this is what their life is. So <clears throat> I watch a lot of true crime, I mean, that's what I watch, and so I came across a case of a couple that was originally from St. Louis and they moved to Atlanta. And they had his husband and wife. They had a huge family, I think like four plus kids, right? And they had all of these different businesses. I think she was a hairstylist. He had his own business and then they had a business together. And unfortunately, murder happened. She ended up shooting him and then killing herself. And then another incident, there was a young woman I was just watching today who was literally posting weekly about her relationship. <clears throat> Sometimes it would be very um, vague messages. Then she would post how much she loves her, her fiance because he they did get engaged and he's the best thing ever. Um, he's her rock, he's her peace, he's her knight in shining armor, armor, excuse me. He ended up, unfortunately, killing her, leaving their children without parents. And again, she's someone who was always sharing on her accounts how great she was. You know, what I mean? this is my thing. I really, truly, and honestly believe this. I really feel like people who are secure in their relationship and in life in general, 
they're not necessarily, you don't hear about it. They move in silence. You don't really know what's going on. And let me just say this, there's a big difference between sharing great news as opposed to sharing something every week, something's going on. Or, you know, I'm gonna share my news and then the next week, I'm gonna share some sad news about that news. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm seeing like a pattern over and over of these people that overshare about stuff going on. And it turns out to be not that great. I feel like certain people love the attention and that could be from your family members to just people you know on social media to celebrities who was that that was getting on my dang on nurse who was that lizzo kept posting up like girl nobody cares and so again people who are out here doing the name first of all they don't have time to be posting on social media like that they are moving in silence and one thing i, I always tell jb even though he's 11 years old i said look you could get something like this. <clears throat> this is called a journal. It's, it's blank pages. When you want to vent, right in here. Don't be putting stuff on social media. Y'all, I have a family member who does it a lot. She literally posts, and then she goes back and deletes it. And it's not to be funny. It's just, I'm just shocked. And it's not even like a certain age group. Because this family member is like only five years younger than my own mama. And you have people in my family who are young in their early 20s that post a lot. Or people who post about their jobs. Like you cannot be doing that. Like really, when things are going great, keep it on the down low. When things are going bad, keep it on the down low. Like, you don't need to share everything on social media. And there are certain things that, I don't say this, there are certain people who you think they may be on the sideline. They want to see you, you know, thrive. Those people actually be on the sideline waiting to see you F up. They waiting to see your downfall. They're waiting, they're laughing on the sideline. There's people that live for that. Like, there was this thread, I'm sorry, there was this meme that came across um, and I thought it was funny because it was true. It says that, what did it say? Don't um, be don't be upset about posting your stuff. I'm on the sixth season of your bullshit life, basically. I'm on, I'm on the sixth season, third episode of your bullshit life. So there's people that are thriving and looking on the, and they, they expect it from you. So I know, yeah, I know my people don't do that, right? No wonder, I, I, none of my followers, subscribers do that, right? Y'all just be careful. I had a little side gig that I had applied for and within this job, I wasn't sure about it, but I took it anyway because it was quick, easy money, right? So within this job, I had to download a third party application on my phone that required me to access Facebook. Then what it would do is it will ask me to sign into my Facebook page and it would ask me, how do you feel about this post? How did this post make you feel? And so just know, I, I decided not to do it because I was like, ooh, this is a little too intrusive. So just know that there are companies out there, and y'all pretty sure, my, my people are smart. Like y'all smart, right? There are companies out there that will hire hire people maybe even your friends because mind you it was wanting to access my account i have to give access to my full facebook account which means that they had access to my friends pages and then they were able to see my friends posts and i had to then say how i felt about a particular post and so i didn't feel comfortable with that by by the time i said no to it they already had access to it and so but I guess my whole point is just know that everything on social media, even when you delete it, it's still there. But there's that one website called what? What is it called? Time, Time Machine. You can literally, and I used to use that a lot in the, like five, six years ago, might not longer than that. I used to use Time Machine a lot to go back and look at people's stuff. You can literally go back. When you delete it, it's still there. It is still there.
so y'all that is it i'm rambling now the wine is doing what it's supposed to be doing thank y'all so much for watching and thank you as always to all of you subscribers take care bye